everyone. Happy New Year. Hope you guys had an amazing Christmas holiday. Welcome back to my channel, Chioma Tech TV. My name is Chioma and today we'll be making this eukaryotic 3D animal cell model. Look at this baby. Do you like it? Isn't she beautiful? Okay. As you guys already know, I'm a fifth grader in a highly gifted magnet school, and I was given this project for winter break. Now, I'll help you guys make it. Okay, if you guys have this project and you are overwhelmed, relax and take a deep breath, because I'll show you how to make it step by step. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel. Also, click that notification button so that I never miss a video because I'll be posting a lot. Please, 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 just hit that red subscribe button. I really need your help and support. So without further ado, let's get started. The materials for my project are... So the first thing you're going to do is take a pencil and a ruler. You're going to line up your ruler to the middle of the styrofoam ball. And then you're going to draw a line because that is where you're going to cut. We're going to need to do this because we need half of the styrofoam ball to put on top of our other half to make our animal cell. Then once you have drawn the line, you're going to take your box cutter and you're going to use it to slice the styrofoam ball in half. Please guys, I advise you to ask your parents to help you because this styrofoam ball is something that's really, really hard to cut. Please ask your parents to help you. Now that we've cut out half of the half of the styrofoam ball, you're going to need to take your sandpaper and smoothen out the surface so that this can get flat and smooth just like the bar. Then you're going to take your toothpicks, remember to use your two points and toothpicks and use it to attach this half to the other half of the ball just like this. The end result should look just like this. For the people who have a full styrofoam ball, you're going to have to take your pencil and mark out where one fourth is on your ball. Then you're going to take your box knife and cut it out just like I cut it like this. And the end result should still look like this, but you're still going to need to sandpaper it. To make the nucleus bar, you're going to need to cut off one fourth of the nucleus, just like this. Then you're going to take your nucleolus ball, which is the 1 or 1.5 inch ball, and cut off one fourth of it so that you can attach it to your nucleus ball. If you want to know what the nucleus ball is, it's our 3 or 4 inch ball. You're going to use toothpicks to attach both of them. But to make the attachment to the big styrofoam ball, you're going to need to take the one fourth of the nucleus ball that you cut off. You're going to be putting it just like this on your other styrofoam ball. And you're going to take your pencil and make an outline so that you can cut out a hole big enough to fit the nucleus ball inside. You're going to need to do this on both sides or else the nucleus ball can't fit inside. But before we do that, you have two options. You can either paint the nucleus and the nucleolus ball while everything is attached, or you can paint it before you attach it. I choose to paint it before I attach it. And I'm going to be painting the nucleus ball light blue and the nucleolus ball gray. Here is how you attach the two styrofoam balls together. You're gonna take four toothpicks, just like this, put them in a pattern just like this. 
Then you're going to attach it right here. You need to make it as far to the back as possible. And then you're just going to push it down and it's going to stick. I'm using toothpicks instead of glue because if I make a mistake with toothpicks, I can just pull it out again. But if I make a mistake with glue, then it will be stuck and I won't be able to fix my error. Okay, I've already cut out the hole, so now I'm going to put some toothpicks on the bottom of my styrofoam ball and use it to attach the top to the ball bottom. Before we do that, I just colored my nucleus ball blue. So now I can actually attach the top to the bottom. And once you're ready to do that, you also need to do the nucleolus ball. With the one fourth of the nucleolus ball that we cut off, I put some toothpicks in the bottom of it so that I can use it to attach it to the nucleus ball. But we're going to need to paint the top gray so that it can look like an actual nucleolus ball. So Because that is how an actual nucleolus ball looks. Okay, now I'm painting my cell pink. And I just finished. I painted it pink because that is how an actual cell looks. It looks pink. And I need to tell you that I painted inside a little bit so the pink can really stand out. Now that I've filled in all of the little white spots, next I'm going to show you how to make the organelles. Big part. Now, to make the mitochondria, which is going to look like this when you're finished, you're going to take your black marker and you're going to draw an oval on it, on the yellow foam paper. Then, once you're finished doing that, you're going to take your red marker and you're going to draw some swiggly lines to make the inner membrane. It should look like that, but I'm not that good of a drawer. Next, you're going to take your black marker and draw some little black dots inside to re represent the ribosomes. And that is how you make your mitochondria. Now, to make your lysosomes, all you'll need is to take your yellow foam paper. You're going to draw a circle with your black marker and you're going to cut it out. To make your bulk holes, all you'll need is white foam paper since I didn't have brown foam paper. You're going to color it brown, you're going to draw a circle with your black marker and cut it out. To make your peroxism, I took white foam paper, colored it green, used my black marker to draw a circle and I cut it out just like this. To make my ribosomes, I took white foam paper because I didn't have black foam paper and I colored it black and then I cut it out. To make your Goji apparatus, you just need to cut out a small portion of blue styrofoam paper. Then you're going to fold it like this. I like to fold it with bubbles on each hand, you see these little holes, because that's how the Goji apparatus actually looks, and we're trying to make this look as realistic as possible. Then you're going to take your super glue and apply it to your structure. But before you do that, make sure you glue the pieces of the Goji apparatus together. You can use regular glue, but i rather just use a needle and thread to stitch it together because you don't have to wait for it to dry. Then, once you apply your super glue to your structure, you're just going to put your Goji apparatus on the styrofoam paper like this and hold it for a few seconds so that, you can, so that the super glue can do its work and stick it. Then, once you let go, it should stick to the styrofoam paper. To make your rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you take a long piece of red foam paper, it has to be long just like this, and you apply your black dots that represents the ribosomes. You have to fill up the whole line front and back. It can be like going crazy like up and down, any pattern you want, front and back. Then you're going to fold it just like you folded the Goji apparatus with the bubbles on each side. Then once you're finished folding it, you will take your needle and thread and stitch it together. You could use regular glue, but like I said before, I think the needle and thread works better. Then once you're done, you will take your super glue and apply it to the foam paper. 
Then you stick it onto your structure just like this. It can be anywhere, but make sure to put some around the nucleus because that's how it actually looks. Remember to hold it for a few seconds and then once you remove your hands, you will be done. Remember, you have to do the same thing with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Just make sure not to put any black dots or else they'll think it's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Just bend it just like you did to the other one and apply it to your structure. I cut a strand of string from my DNA. Then, I used white paint and applied it to the bottom of my nucleus. I made swiggly lines with the string and then applied it to the white paint. Don't bother using glue because the wet white paint will hold the string perfectly. And my DNA. Finally guys, I placed my smooth endoplasmic reticulum around the upper part of the nucleus. And ta-da! My eukaryotic 3D animal cell model is ready and beautiful. For the labels of my organelles, I typed their names out of each label, pasted them on some foam paper, cut it out and held each one with a toothpick fastened with masking tape, just like this one. I will now place my label on each one of my organelles. We have finished putting the labels and these are my organelles. This is the Golgi apparatus. This is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. These are lysosomes, and these are the ribosomes. The outer layer that we painted pink is the cell membrane. The peroxisome are these little green foam paper right here. The mitochondria is this yellow foam paper with red swiggly lines. The vesicles are these little blue dots that I put next to the Golgi apparatus. The vault holes are the brown foam paper right here. The cytoplasm is all the white that we're seeing all over this whole entire cell model. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is just like the smooth one, except with red zones. The cis side is where the vesicles, which are the little blue dots, are coming in, and the trans side is where they're coming out. And the DNA is this little strand of string. The nucleus is this little blue styrofoam ball. And the nucleolus is the gray styrofoam ball. And that is everything. If you watched this video up until this moment, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and notification button. Thank you guys so much for watching. And please make sure to watch out for my next video, which is going to be a 3D plant cell